Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Coming together as God's family, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the glorious intercession of the Virgin and Martyr, St. Lucy, give us new heart, we pray, O Lord, so that we may celebrate her heavenly birthday in this present age, and so behold things eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. When Balaam raised his eyes and saw Israel encamped tribe by tribe, the Spirit of God came upon him, and he gave voice to his oracle. The utterance of Balaam, son of Beor, the utterance of a man whose eye is true, the utterance of one who hears what God says and knows what the Most High knows, of one who sees what the Almighty sees, enraptured and with eyes unveiled. How goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your encampments, O Israel! They are like gardens beside a stream, like the cedars planted by the Lord. His wells shall yield free-flowing waters. He shall have the sea within reach, his king shall rise higher, and his royalty shall be exalted. Then Balaam gave voice to his oracle. The utterance of Balaam, son of Beor, the utterance of the man whose eye is true, the utterance of one who hears what God says and knows what the Most High knows, of one who sees what the Almighty sees enraptured and with eyes unveiled. I see him, though not now. I behold him, though not near. A star shall advance from Jacob, and a staff shall rise from Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your, your ways, ways, O Lord. Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Teach, teach me, me your ways, ways, O Lord. Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your kindness are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Teach, teach me, me your, your ways, ways, O Lord. Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus, he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. 
He teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, O Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus had come into the temple area, the chief priest and the elders of the people approached him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them in reply, I shall ask you one question, and if you answer it for me, then I shall tell you, by what authority I do these things. Where was John's baptism from? Was it of heavenly or of human origin? They discussed this among themselves and said, if we say of heavenly origin, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we fear the crowd, for they all regard John as a prophet. So they said to Jesus in reply, We do not know. He said to them, Neither shall I tell you by whose authority I do these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we're celebrating the feast day of St. Lucy, sometimes also known as St. Lucy of Syracuse because she was from Sicily. And one of the things that we know about her is that she was one of the early martyrs of the church, and she was known, first of all, for her virginity, and was also known for being a martyr. Now, one of the things that we uh, also know about her is that she celebrated very much so in the uh, northern countries of Europe, especially places like Sweden, because during this time of year, not as, uh, let's say, early as Chicago, even earlier, it gets dark. You know, it gets dark here at 4.30 now. So there, at this time of the year, the days are very short. And so this particular feast day is also known as the Festival of Lights. And many northern areas uh, celebrate her because she, her name, Lucy, is very similar to light in Latin. So that she's known for that. And when we think about this time, I'm sure many of you have noticed it, it gets light around 7, 10 or so, and it gets dark around 4, 32 or so. And when that happens, the days seem short. So for some people, uh, they go to work in the dark and they come home in the dark. And when that happens, it kind of, you know, the day kind of seems like a drudgery. And so to have a celebration that's focused on light that's focused on hope, that's focused on uh, darkness being overcome by the power of light, especially when we're so close to the celebration of the birth of Christ, it certainly goes hand in hand. Lucy is also the patron saint of those with eye illnesses. And that is another way to uh, think about her gifts, because tradition has it that the Lord protected her from different ways that they wanted her to be martyred until at last she was martyred by the sword. But there's also traditions that speak about her as being someone whose eyes were removed. I'm using the light word instead of saying gouged. 
And so that's another way that she's known. So the irony of this is that after her martyrdom, when they went to uh, see Lucy, they found her with her eyes restored. So there, therefore, the tradition of her being the patron saint of those with eye illnesses. The main thing here is that Lucy was someone who, as a young woman, accepted deeply her faith. She decided to commit herself to being a virgin, and she did not want to marry. But her parents arranged for her to be married, and it's tradition has it that it is her fiancé, the man whom she was betrothed to marry, that turned her in for being a Christian. And he did this with the hope that he would marry her. But what instead happened is that she was martyred. So he also made a poor calculation there as well. And what we also know is that her tradition uh, started very early in the church. There was a sense of her being someone that people look to for miracles, people look to for guidance, people look to for examples. And in fact, when we think about it, someone from Sicily that becomes so important to a nation like Sweden seems kind of surprising. But it's because of her model, it's because of her devotion, and it's because of her faith. As we listen to today's first reading from Numbers, we hear the use of the word I. And what we hear is that the Lord sees us, that he watches over us, that he guides us, and he desires ultimately what is best for us. In today's gospel, Jesus encounters those who are essentially hypocrites. They don't know um, what they want to say because they recognize maybe in their hearts that they have rejected the message of John the Baptist, and they also now see Jesus in such a way as well. And so Jesus points out their hypocrisy to them in today's gospel. And when we reflect on the early Christian martyrs, this is, uh, she traditionally died uh, around 300. When that time in the church was a time when the church was becoming more accepted, but not widely accepted, and there would be persecutions from time to time, and people, uh, because they were afraid, would turn in relatives or that kind of thing, neighbors, friends, in order to protect themselves or for financial gain. But these, were, these uh, had real consequences. But ultimately, what we know is that the faith of these martyrs, their willingness to die for their faith, and especially in this case, uh, a young woman, a young beautiful woman, we might add, willing to die for her faith and her love of Christ, it instructed the people and helped them to come to their faith. And so when we think about this time, we have a beautiful day here today, but we think about this time where we might experience darkness. For example, all those who suffered from the tornadoes this weekend, we can imagine how devastating that is. And Lucy remains for us, St. Lucy, a sign of hope, a sign of light in a world that might seem to be filled with darkness. She uh, gives to us this wonderful example of someone who was willing to give her life because, because of her faith in Christ. Let us bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. 
Let us pray first of all for Francis, our Pope, for bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, and for the intentions of the Pope, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who are least in our world, especially those who are suffering in any way, especially the people affected by the tornadoes this weekend and the people of Kentucky. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who are sick, for those who are in need of healing, especially those who suffer from ailments of the eye, that they may be experience the grace and intercession of St. Lucy on their behalf. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who are at this time serving in the military, who desire uh, to be with their families during the celebrations of Christmas and New Year's and will not be able to do that. And for their safety, we pray to the Lord. Let's pray for first responders and for those in the medical fields, we pray to the Lord. Let's remember the intentions of the supporters of the Society Little Flower. For these, we pray to the Lord. And let us remember our beloved dead, those who have gone before us, that they may be one with Christ, we pray to the Lord. And let us now offer our own intentions, our own longings, our own desires before our Father in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Father, we bring all our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them through the intercession of St. Lucy. We ask our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day, may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 
Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new, and eternal covenant, which you poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life in the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a safe sign of peace. Lamb of God, sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven 
and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us offer a prayer to Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, go in the peace of Christ. The Mass is ended. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.